So I want to I want to wrap up this conversation with uh, one or two key takeaways and suggestions from all of you. So, uh, yeah, starting with you, how do you suggest uh, you know organizations or the technology and security leaders? How do they build a trusted data protection? A couple of things. Security is twenty four seven, so you have to be always on top. You have to always work on that, and and security goes through and through. So right from right from your developers who are writing the code to deployments and building this multi layer of security. Uh, so you have to ensure that everywhere uh, you are you are actually fully covered on security. So, Rohit, what are your suggestions uh, for building a trusted data protection strategy on 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 the on the foundation of uh, of a strong uh, data encryption and key management system? It has to be a comprehensive uh, strategy, which is a which is probably a four pronged strategy. Um, the first the first side of it is protecting the data which you are collecting and you know the different layers of protection of the real data. Second is having clear policies, which uh, you know, like many of us said, that uh, how do you make this data not just a job of one function, but democratization of uh, acceptance of security as a part of everything we do, which is about security and policy. Third is not just the software data or the soft data, but also on the uh, on the IT side, that how do you really have a strategy around protecting uh, data from uh, individuals laptop what they are accessing and the third is the external uh, vendors who you are working with what is your strategy around solving uh, for data leaks which could happen on the external environments you are building products which depend on data uh, so a framework which allows you to have a basic governance on is the data healthy right is it is it something you can trust is the data secure, protected, right? Whenever you're building a solution, uh, start thinking from uh, from the ground up itself in terms of uh, uh, how do you actually kind of always use encrypted data, specifically with respect to PII, right? So uh, irrespective of the multiple uh, services that one would actually build, ensure that uh, whatever gets uh, carried across from one system to the other is always encrypted and sent across. And uh, the best is basically if you actually use a specific KMS tool, which actually helps you in encryption, right? So that is probably my key takeaway. Uh, robust data governance framework uh, should be the strategy, right? Uh, from collection of the data all the way to the disposal, the entire life cycle should be understood properly. Who has access to what, when and why uh, has to be uh, mapped out and, and appropriate security controls. Uh, security and privacy controls needs to be put in place. What I would really like to convey over here is that only one statement that prevention is better than cure part. Because many organizations think that, okay, if I'm going to take a step of prevention, I'm going to spend uh, so much money on this. Uh, and at the same time, they might forget that if we, if we come onto a stage where we need to go for a cure, that's almost uh, many times of that money that would we, we are spending right now. I mean, if I were to conclude, uh, data protection, data security is today no longer just uh, a, a compliance imperative or something that, uh, or, or a regulatory uh, push, uh, you know, factor. It's it's more, it's becoming more of a business imperative uh, to ensure that your data is protected and secure because the cost of data breaches is rising and uh, and and uh, it, it's going to continue to rise further and uh, the fact that. Uh, organizations are going to continue are they are going to get breached there's there's no two ways about it because it's no longer a question of if it's, it's more about when so organizations have to be prepared with a with a data protection strategy uh, that that actually brings the entire uh, you know business imperative into the picture and not just look at the compliance need and requirement so with that i would like to thank all of you for uh, joining me uh, for this session today and I hope you had a lot of uh, good insights and takeaways for you to get back with and apply them within your own organization. So thank you so much and have a great day ahead. Yeah, I mean, there are several takeaways, uh, but I guess one of the one, uh, one of the important ones, what everybody kind of agreed on uh, was uh, having a robust data security strategy and uh, not be complacent. It was a very engaging session uh, and the peers who are part of the panel as well, the other panelists actually put across very relevant uh, points in terms of
how data encryption and uh, basically even effective key management is probably one of the ways of uh, ensuring data governance. So, so I think really happy to be in the session, right? I think for one, right, it was good to see thoughts of all the panelists, right, converge around a variety of uh, these questions or topics, right, starting from the need for a multi-layer security, right, the need to also have the final line of defense, right, which is like encryption. I think it was a very, very meaningful solution. Uh, personally, for me, it was, uh, you know, some aspects while uh, everyone thinks about cyber securities, but there were some nuanced aspects which were discussed in the panel, uh, uh, which is a key learning uh, for me today. One thing which I really liked about this session was, uh, I think it was good to resonate your thoughts and actually hear about how other than the industry are actually uh, handling security and what are the approaches they're taking. And it was also reassuring that uh, that some of the steps which, which you have already taken are actually like the like the standards of what needs to be done. So as a part of Thales Group, we are present in India more than 50 years now. And uh, from uh, Thales Data Protection Portfolio, we have been securing the data of most of the banks, uh, NBFCs, which includes insurance, mutual funds, uh, stock brokers, stock exchanges, IT, ITES. And that's, it was a good exposure for us as well to understand more about the e-commerce market and how they think about this kind of a solution which was really positive from their side and uh, let's let's see like how, how we can work with them and uh, solve their problem as well